thank you so much ruchi uh, our next speaker is a senior consultant neurologist he is the professor and head of department of neurology at km school of pg medicine and research and shet vs general hospital he is the executive committee member of indian academy of neurology in 2016 honorable president of india awarded him the fourth highest civilian honor of padma shri award for his contribution to medical sciences he is a multifaceted personality a teacher a musician and orator a well read scholar a prolific speaker a scientist a philanthropist an occultist as well as an ad administrator he is known internationally for his research between fasting and meditation he has been interviewed by various television networks like bbc cnbc discovery channel and many other international and national channels he was the organizing chairman of the indian academy of neurology conference which was a big national event held in ahmedabad he has delivered innumerable keynote lectures in india as well as in the usa uk and other countries he is an active member of several national state and international level neurology bodies he has a his own library with has, which has approximately 9000 books on philosophy ethics religion and culture he has given selfless medical services to more than 5000 saints from different religion and different sectors enlisted in the power 100 list of divya baskar depicting 100 powerful persons of gujarat and credited to several papers publications and books awarded with the international uno award please give him a warm welcome to the nationally reputed neurologist dr sudhir nisha thank you thank you very much thank you very much vidanshi and uh, it's really a matter of a great uh, pleasure and honor to be with the students who are actually my most beloved class of uh, medical medical fraternity because you are the present and you are the future of medicine and uh, today's topic that we have chosen is specifically to give you some words of wisdom some pulse of wisdom that might help many of you uh, in the direction that you take further this is something which is not in your books this is beyond books none of the things which i'll mention because it's a matter of practice matter of art and therefore uh, i think it will be really uh, very nice for you to take uh, notes of all this i think we are before time and adit has done a very good job he has left 10 15 minutes in balance for me so we'll use it for question answer if they have but i will have a presentation of nearly 50 55 minutes or so which i think uh, should be okay so kindly uh, give a uh, nice listening may i uh, share the screen now yeah okay uh, is the screen there vidanshi uh, are you able sir. to see the screen yes sir all right uh, okay let me go to Uh, ah yes uh, so so as students uh, your major interest would be you are having some anxiety what will be happening to you in the course of your life would you be a successful doctor a physician or a specialist or surgeon that would be your major concern and i think it is very rightly so because uh, everybody wants to be famous rich and you know excellent but in your books only teach you how to be academically uh, do it maybe how to get good marks as adit was saying and there is flaws in the system also but excellence is something a different ball game and uh, those of us we are you know we have been practice more than 30 35 years have watch our lives and our world compared with the, you know other friends and we realize that excellence requires something else than academics excellence in medical practice may not depend only on academic success so that is the bottom line so this i dedicate this talk to my stellar teachers professor singal dr vadia dr yasu at houston and dr shorvan at london where i studied in different 
aspects of neurology and of course i dedicate to you my beloved people my students that you know uh, wisdom character kindness and high caliber research these are the core things that you have to learn in your life i'm fortunate to have this kind of professors so the first question that comes to our mind is what are the key dimension of a great physician key dimension of a great physician basically its character advanced knowledge updated knowledge whether through virtual classes or ideally through the practical room classes and bedside medicine is the most important nobody can replace bedside medicine sincerity clinical judgment innovation research curiosity communication compassion and ethics unfortunately this is not mentioned in your book except for this part knowledge advance so first of all we talk about the ethics ethics is what ethics is knowing the difference between what you have a right to do and what is right to do what you have a right to do and what is right to do. that difference you know that is ethics so exhibit appropriate professional behaviors honesty compassion care and confidentiality these are the key words demonstrate a commitment to excellence and always stay curious and innovative this is how you can really stick to the high standard ethics excellence is your uh, commitment to yourself communication is the vital key between the doctor patients relatives and colleagues so after the ethics the most important uh, denominator of uh, success or excellence is communication it's a lifeline this point to patients behave when you are going to the was many of you must be in second and third and previous you must be exposed to ward patients except for this corona time you will be going there and there you see patients don't utter sometimes but they have lot of things written on their face in their eyes in your in their mouth in on their on their expression so you should respond to all that that is the art that we have to learn so what do you have to do you have to use simple words that they understand use proper body language lean forward talk in a very polite manner don't tell in a hurry and go oh this is a fine old for us just spend a minute or two and explain them give them time to digest take sufficient pauses let it be dialogue not only you should say but let them also respond it should not be a monologue i know these are two different lectures success and happiness and each of them require at least one hour and i am going to compress so i'll be little fast but i have lot of faith in all of you your understanding and intelligence so i am sure you will grasp the words very quickly so on patient's trust and confidence always greet your patient and relatives with a smile okay don't take your face you know which is you know quarrel with somebody and then go and just be very calm quiet and wear a smile on your face if they are happy with your attitude then they usually blame it on god and the karma in case of adverse problem something goes wrong if you are nice to them this will save you so attitude is most important you don't know which case turns out into emergency and have an unanticipated outcome howsoever great you may be in your clinical skill or surgical skills but if you are bad in behavior anything goes wrong and you are in a soup and you are knowing you are aware that lots of cases suits are filed in court just because of this communication issue and ethics issue third is knowledge acquisition there is that there is no alternative to great knowledge it's a core competence the i see what the mind knows so you must know everything read textbook review articles journals research networking talks online teaching coaching teach the and teach the other fellows to stay to base to way to revise is to teach or discuss among your friends knowledge based hierarchy does not believe in any holiday so uh, uh you know just learn whatever way now that online platforms are available so as far as the non clinical aspects of teaching are concerned many of them you can learn on uh, on the online platform as it was very nicely discussing 
I am very happy that Adil grew up in front of me and he is now turned into a very mature man running such a giant organization. So this is what I believe. I believe in uh, you guys because you are the future and you are the present. So uh, try to grasp some of the points which uh, which your senior is talking to you with a lot of experience. So all of the words that I am saying, have each of them have many. Clinical judgment, demonstrate clinical reasoning, make sound diagnostic and therapeutic decisions, incorporate cost awareness and risk benefit analysis. So this is how your, your clinical judgment is very important. When you see a patient, there may be four differential diagnoses, but you have to apply in the given situation what suits the best and how best you are treating treatable diseases should be most important. And when you are having not sure what diagnosis, go into more depth of history and clinical findings and add up with the investigations. See, knowledge and evidence-based practice that you have to combine. It is not only evidence-based practice, not only knowledge-based practice. So you recognize that practice uncertainty and there are knowledge gaps in clinical medicine. Everything is not certain. Clinical medicine is an art and everything is not one plus one is equal to two. So you, when you uh, focus on information, then you'll be able to gather this knowledge you just filter it out and that will become knowledge. And from knowledge, if you distill, the wisdom comes out. And that's, these are the pulse of wisdom. So all that information may not be necessary. 90% of information will fall out. And then from that knowledge, and then only one line will be wisdom. So integrate evidence into decision making in your practice. Keep yourself continuously updated. So if I revise the core competency of the doctor is a character, which is formed of ethics, knowledge, sincerity, clinical judgment, innovation, curiosity, analysis, and, com and communication, and compassion and humility. Now, before we embark to the 10 success uh, laws of success of medical practice, or 10 laws of excellence in medical practice, I want to reiterate two important things. The law of success is the law of people. In today's day, individual practice is not going to help you. You have to think about group practice. While you are still in your undergrads or postgraduate, and when you are planning to practice in a couple of years, you have to make a group of friends, like-minded people who, you know, as for example, a cardiologist is doing card, then you should have one interventional guy, one uh, clinical guy, the another fellow is the arrhythmia guy, and another is the, you know, uh, different other subspecialties. You know, there are a lot of things uh, now, the procedures are coming up like atrial appendage blocking. So, if you make a group of five people, then your life will be easy and you'll be able to. Uh, get a large group of patients. In a brain-based economy, best assets are people. Only by attracting the best people will you accomplish great needs. Team building is vital for professionalism. So create an environment where the best, the brightest, most creative, intelligent people are attracted and retained. And they should be uh, given enough power, empower them to shine out. So this is called law people. So these are very important law. And another important uh, law is law of time. Respect the time and time will respect you. When I was studying in UK, my professor Marsden, he was 57 and I was only uh, 30, uh, 30 years. So, so when I uh, met him, I saw that he had created a uh, enormous amount of literature, lots of monograms belong to him. So one day, uh, when he was in a very good mood uh, over coffee, I asked him, so what is the reason why you are so successful? Then he gave me these three laws. Respect the time and time will respect you. Don't uh, waste your time in unnecessary things. Of course, time with friends and family and quality time is important for your hobbies and your creativity. But useless waste of time at the cost of your own development is 
nonsense and i need this in my life and whatever little success i have got is because of uh, following this three laws the second thing he taught me do only those things that you only can do or enjoy doing i'll give an example like i have a driver from day one because i don't like driving i i am a driver but i'm not a very good driver either so i kept a driver even though I, it was a start of my practice uh, because of his insistence dr marsden said to do so because he also did so so i was saving roughly 50 minutes of my driving time and at the back in the back seat i used to scribble down write conceive and draw certain figures and charts and also uh, create medical literature and the books that i wrote six books i can tell you are just nothing but the product of this investment of time so third thing is decide on whom to meet why to meet where to meet and for how long to meet don't allow people to intrude in your life just like that if you have some work with somebody go and meet him at his place don't call him at your place him or her otherwise you know when he or she will go will be in his or her hand and you will be at mercy of the person if you are going to somebody's place it is you who will get up and say sir okay thank you for your help etc etc like that why to meet you chart out where to meet and how long to meet so this is the law of time now we come to the basic thing 10 golden rules of achieving excellence in medical practice what's a great physician great physician or excellent physician or surgeon is eminence based elegance based eloquence based and evidence based he walks like a king he talks like a king he has elegance he has a grace and he has uh, knowledge uh, emanating from his or her face and he of course follows evidences successful medical practice may not be dependent on academic excellence i remind you so if you are first in gold medal that doesn't mean you will be successful in practice i have thousands of examples where the gold medalists are in a in a rotten place and the middle guy is in, in a top race so that the reason is this 10 laws that there is no substitute to knowledge sincerity honesty and hard work believe me there is no substitute to knowledge sincerity honesty and hard work and this is my professor wadia with the example with the padma bhushan padma vibhushan the patient is in the center of our right there is a law of number 1 just focus on good health outcome all other aspects are secondary please do not adulterate uh, the patient outcome is anything what i mean by adulterate what i will earn from this patient how i will benefit my colleague or how i will get kickback or this or that no nothing doing it takes doctor patient relationship forms one of the foundation fundamentals of medical ethics and healing process so please do not adulterate and just focus on how i can help this patient in the best possible way from all angles not only from medical recovery but also from social and financial aspects also if that compassion and that ethics flows from you you will be atop you will be ahead of all of your colleagues i will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures that are required avoiding those twin traps of over treatment and under treatment or therapeutic nihilism i will prevent the disease whenever i can you know that prevention is always preferable to cure if a patient of stroke comes to you you should find out why he had a stroke or a heart attack and then find out the risk factors and try to prevent second stroke also screen the family members if they are high risk people there are more than one or two strokes or heart attacks screen them and find out risk factors for them maybe lipids or homocysteine or apla or whatever and treat them all before the disease happens that is what is the prevention aspect one of the prime duties of physician is to prevent disease second law is, is uh, talk less and listen more do appropriate gestures be a great listener professor singhal my teacher used to listen 70% of the time and 30% time he would talk in one hour inter uh, interview with the patient or meeting with the patient 70 uh, percent of the time patient would be allowed to speak and only little he will speak wherever required questioning or some distributed things so appropriate gestures be a great listener we are always in a hurry to talk and say and cut down the patient you will just 
cut his sentence. Don't do that. Just uh, listen them very carefully. You know, 70% of the diseases are psychosomatic. They come sometimes and pay you just because they want somebody to listen to you. So here, listening is a beyond hearing. You are trying to you know, process and comprehension is your visionary aspect. Same will see. But when you observe, it is beyond seeing and then visualize. So what is, why he is doing all this? So all these things would be most important. Eye contact, gestures, these are the very important things. Answer their questions very uh, carefully. Educate them, counsel them. If required, pet their shoulder. Don't worry, I'm here. You'll be fine. Don't worry. So communicate effectively. Please do not turn down. Please do, do not turn down the patient or relative or any involved doctor. His role is a healer. So third rule is don't turn down. You will be very, very compassionate. The role of as a healer is humility and compassion are very important. Always say the truth, but in a presentable manner. I have come across so many surgeons and physician colleagues who just say, hey, there, there is a 50% mortality and if you want to come, then it's fine. Otherwise, you may get this paralysis, this, that. Now, it may be high risk patient, but there is a way how you break the news. So, and at the same time, if they have some demand like this investigation or that investigation, listen to them and then carefully counsel by in a case of neuropathy, CT scan of brain is not required. So, if they come with this kind of unrelated demand, you may explain, look, this is muscle and now and where we have CT scan talks about brain. So maybe it is waste of money and I think it is better we do EMG now conduction in a very amicable manner. So this is this is a matter of culture also, not only teaching how your texture is, how your family has brought up you, how your teachers have taught you, what environment you are living in, that is important. Compassion is very important. Have you have more, as a doctor, if you don't have compassion and that doesn't reflect in your care and helping nature, then you are not a good doctor. There is no nobility. You are a commercial man and just just distributing health care uh, in the return of money. No. If you want to excel, then you have to be compassionate. See, treatment can be of four types. Somebody comes with fever, you can give metacin that anybody can do. That is a symptomatic cure. If somebody comes with uh, fever and if you are slightly trained, you might give uh, treatment of malaria or whatever. And then that is a little relief of the uh, disease. That is treatment of disease. Then we come to third level is management. So if you have a stroke, then as I said, you find out why you had a stroke and how to prevent that stroke, etc., etc., And accordingly you treat. Uh, and prevent further stroke and also do physiotherapy, speed therapy and uh, also take care of depression. So that is a management, a very, very professional doctor can do. But if you want to be healer or excellent person, then you have to do a lot many other things like, like compassion, care, healing, all those things you have to add. Okay, wait, hey, how is your family? How I best can help you? In a limited uh, kind of uh, frame, we have to go a little beyond and uh, look into the eyes of the patient, heart of the patient, and try to heal the disease, console the uh, body, mind, and the soul at all three levels. I'll remember that is art to medicine as well as science and warm sympathy and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or chemistry. That is very important. Please remember that the patient is always right. The patient is always first. So when you are taking optimal decision, there may be clinical data. There will be research evidence. So that is evidence-based medicine. But we are forgetting patient values. We are not taught to look into that. We must take care of all those things, what he feels. So discuss he, with him or her the decisions and that is how we should know. You know, what is the starting of problem? Why there are a lot of cases and why there is violence against doctors, which all of us are concerned. One of the reasons is the problem starts when your attitude is one, of, one or more of the following. This is not my job. I am too busy. Patient is too demanding. You are asking stupid things. These are the reasons of inviting trouble. 
so don't do this if the case is difficult write from beginning explain them very kindly politely write it down on paper take the consent and explain them properly or also op offer optional opinions never cut corners never cut corners due to time and money about two factors are common drivers of cutting the corners in medical practice so don't do that doctor should be rewarded for quality care and not for cutting corners i don't have time so i won't be able to justify these or if the patient does not have money therefore i won't be able to treat these are all wrong things don't focus on patient's finance first manage the disease and offer optional things if the patient doesn't have money offer them you go to government hospital or in civil hospital etc but first you attend the patient and manage the disease don't discriminate between the patient no this is poor patient this is rich patient this is this caste this is another caste this is my cheat case this is not this case this is wrong a real excellent noble doctor will never discriminate between the patient for him everybody is same always remember it is not the fever chart or cancerous growth that has to be treated but ailing sick human being is in front of it we just look at the chart and just you know no look at the patient take the pulse uh, look into his eyes and discuss with him and give him compassionate pat that is what you have to treat don't look at the charts only a good physician treats the disease the best physician excellent physician treats the patient with the disease very important very important uh, and uh, william osler is the guy who jotted down all these lines one illness is not confined to oneself but may affect the person's family and economic stability so over responsibility also includes these related problems when providing adequate care to the sick Fifth, never hesitate in referring to an expert for second opinion. I will not be ashamed to say I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleague for expert opinion. Because sometimes skills of another expert or senior or more trained person require. Now there are days of such speciality. In my days, there was general neurology. Then came stroke, then epilepsy, infection, disease, headache. Now headache is a speciality. Demyelinating disease. So there are twelve major lines, and now in demyelination we have adult pediatric. In adult we have now only central demyelination, peripheral demyelination, and so on. Tomorrow, right eye specialist and left eye specialist. Everything will be like that. So science is expanding, knowledge is expanding. You can't keep pace with everything. So don't sit on the patient. If you don't know, call somebody. Else. in the interest of well being of the patient or for having a different view point or for learning or for sharing responsibility there are four reasons why you can involve an expert it's okay to say i don't know even at this stage of my life i tell so many times to well, no sorry i i don't think i am the right guy to treat you i'll send you to the colleague or some to person in delhi or mumbai etc and don't be afraid to challenge the experts also sometimes you learn from the expert observe them but seek out them as mentors or partners but the expert may also have made mistake or level down so don't uh, success doesn't come from blind obedience to someone so keep up reading and also try to see whatever has been advised by expert is correct most important rule is number 6 do not criticize your colleague from your pathi or doctors from other medicinal system you know what is the biggest crime on earth to break somebody's trust on some person or some faith do not break trust or faith of your patient on a doctor or a medicinal system somebody may believe in ayurveda or homeopathy i usually tell look i am not good at ayurveda or homeopathy it may be good if you wish you can do that but look with my medicines if you combine there may be some untoward reaction i don't know so i personally don't advise etc etc i don't say oh these are all bogus they are quacks or cracks no nothing like i don't know anything how can i comment on them and then millions of millions of people all over the world are following different paths how can they all be wrong and you know the flaws of our own medicine how many flaws we have in our system so you may give your opinion but in a presentable manner please do not opine if you don't know always work in a collaborative way constructive criticism can be beneficial to you respect all other colleagues sometimes we criticize our own colleague because we want to be presenting ourselves oh i am the real expert 
Now the relationship with the colleague is more important than with the patient. A five-day-old patient who has just come in your contact and a 15-year-old colleague with whom we have to have a longer inning of life. So whom would you choose? So even if your colleague has made mistakes, don't utter a word. Uh, I don't say that you want to just cover it up, but you are not supposed to. Even they ask, they say, I don't know, I was not present at that point of time, so how can I come in right now? What is what I can do? That is the way, RuPaul, we can get out from it. So don't criticize the colleague to please the patient and relatives. Sometimes patients and relatives are very smart. They want you to commit uh, the mistakes of others. And once you say they record or they, they somehow they quote you. So respect the referring doctor. The referring doctor or person who has referred the case to you should be respected and should be involved in all decision making. This will be important when you'll be practicing. Referring doctor knows more than you as regards the family, their culture, their economics, their uh, values, etc. You know only the patient's clinical data, but this fellow knows in, each in and out. So take him always into confidence, communicate effectively and take his or her help if required. Keep a safe distance with the patient. Safe distance has to be kept while understanding that medicine is only a science, uh, not only science, but also an art. So emotional attachment with patient or caregiver can affect your unbiased clinical acumen. So don't give false hopes. So don't come very close to the patient and relatives. Don't try to make emotional bondage because that will be counterproductive. And sometimes over kindness is counterproductive. So, you know, when you go out of way to help, no, you should be professional in handling situations. So that also comes through experience and observing seniors. Don't give false hope if the patient is very sick and say, don't worry, I'm there. So you'll be in soup. Tell the exact situation to the relatives, call them in a cabin and record the whole thing and say that this is how your situation is. Your patient has a large hemorrhage with large dilated pupil. We can do operation and the chances of survival are only 10%, etc. etc. So remember this punchline: medicine is a science of uncertainty and an art of probabilities. That is what the best thing you can describe medicine. Warm sympathy and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife for the chemist's drug because it's an art of probability and science of uncertainty. Remember that. Always respect the privacy of patients. Matters of life and death, terminal care, brain death, and withdrawing life support to be treated with utmost care and also science. Now, when you go to the wards and when you're seeing such kind of patient, how best you can uh, counsel them, try yourself and look at the senior wise guys, how they do it. Because this situation you will face many times in your life. If given opportunity to save life, thank God. But if within the power, my power, life has to be taken, patient cannot be saved, then this awesome responsibility must be faced with great humbleness and awareness of one's frailty. Because this is a humility. Above all, I must not play God. Many times patients will come and flatter you, sir, you are like God, next to God, this, that. Don't fall into that trap. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not God. What is the law of God? Doctor is God? No, patient is the God. You say, you are my God. My knowledge is my God. I am not God. I don't play God anymore. Be professional, keep a safe distance. You know what? The time was there when the medical profession was a noble profession. Then it was reduced to a mere profession without nobility attached to it. Then it became a business. Then it became a commerce and now it's taken shape of an industry, healthcare industry offering jobs to doctors. Now doctors, great doctors are now serving in the corporate hospital. That is the scenario. And you look at the uh, patient's you know, reaction. So we are in a very difficult time. So be very careful. Keep written records. Records are primarily intended to support patient care, but also authentically represent your consultation, including telephonic consultation. This is your lifeline. Write legibly, include the date and time, avoid abbreviation, do not alter an entry, avoid unnecessary comments and check dictation reports. So this is very important. Medical legal cases are increasing if I retread and therefore documentation is very important. Be tax savvy and learn telemedicine. 
communication, documentation, communication of what you have documented and documentation of what you have communicated. These are four major skills that will be required for all you guys in coming days. We all are doing right now. Now, above all, now we are touching another different aspect. Uh, take care of your personal health and respect your family. You are a doctor and you know, it doesn't mean that 24 into 7 you have to serve. As I mentioned, time management is important and you have made a good uh, uh, team, team. So every day, 24 to 7, you are not on call. That kind of system you have to understand from right now. So look at your lifestyle, diet, exercise, manage your time, take care of your personal health, hygiene, balance family life, maintain good moral character, appropriate investment, financial health is equally important from this time always also. The day when you start having stipends, start doing savings and invest in a proper way with the help of some financial investment. Because uh, health is not only physical health, mental health, emotional health, there is a financial health component also. So take care of the legal revenue, political and media implication also. This is also now a requirement of time. So attitudes have shifted. Now self-care is now considered a core competency. In Hippocratic time, this was not so. Now. In the newer uh, testament for the doctors, uh, the quotes now includes that self-care and health is also important. Physicians are expected to demonstrate a commitment to personal health and sustainable practice. People like me are uh, riding on seven horses, clinical practice, teaching, administration, I'm director of Dipana, Palana, HOD, academics lectures, writing articles, taking this kind of webinars, then do a lot of research and write up and do medical positions and well. so our health is getting eroded. And at the same time handling media, political persons, IAS, IPS, IRS and difficult questions. So friends, what I want to warn you that in the rate rate of uh, rate rates of success don't fall behind in taking care of your personal health and your happiness. Life is much more important than money. Life is experiences, wisdom, human relationships, physical health, mental health, personal passions, communications, thankfulness, spirituality. And a time comes when you, at the end of uh, age of 50, 60, you would like to give back to the society by teaching, sharing, sponsoring, donating, and serving. Friends, life is larger than medicine. Live life king size. A stage comes when you have to understand that there is one road at the crossroad takes you to more money, more fame, more awards and achievements. That is a road of success. But the another road takes you to bliss, peace and happiness. And that is what I'm going to take it, talk in next 20 minutes. That is pursuit of happiness. Uh, Devansha, I have time for 30 minutes, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so I have a question to ask. Do you want to be happy? Then raise your hands. Yes, you want to be happy? Good, then be. If you want to be happy, then be. Why you are asking me? It is you who will decide you want to become happy or not. You remember, you are in charge of her happiness and not anybody else. Your friend or your circumstances cannot make you happy or unhappy unless you decide to be so. Happiness is our conscious decision, our conscious choice that is free of cost. My dear medical friends, I want to tell you, success is what you derive from the system through your skill and smartness. Our happiness is what you give to the system by your achievements and your culture and your temperament. And, uh, you know, doctors live on an average 10 years lesser than others. If an average Indian lives 74 years of life, and the doctor lives average 64 years. You know, in pandemic, 16% was the death rate of the doctors as against 3 to 6% initially of the in, in patients. Now it has fallen to 1.6. Still, doctors' death rate is 10%. Doctors are most vulnerable from the perspective of lifespan. Our quality of life, how is our quality of life? Why I'm telling you, my dear guys, you are going to carve your future. Listen to what I'm saying. This will make you happy from now. 
if you decide to be happy from this moment you can be going i'll give you some road maps and uh, uh, that is why i'm telling you is your conscious decision conscious choice and take charge of your happiness it is free of cost happiness is a journey not a destination if you mentally have a block that unless i become md or dm i won't be happy i mean I, once i become dm i'll be happy that means you will be unhappy till you become dm no you are happy now until you become dm and even further that kind of mindset the whole journey should be of a journey of happiness the purpose of life what is the purpose of life is to live happily and peacefully and, and enjoy life and give happiness and peace to others so i'll be talking uh, briefly uh, of course i'll be running through slide but i'm sure you will understand the gist of it aristotle said happiness is the meaning and purpose of life the whole aim and the end of human existence in the mad rush of success or even excellence for that purpose we are forgetting that we are happy being we have to be happy and make our family happy and people happy and unfortunately we forget this that is the meaning of life is happiness and there are certain basic things which you should know your there are three types of happiness so one is a pleasure which is sensual based derived from five senses another is joy this is the happiness of achievement and success and awards and third is the bliss which is the internal happiness happiness of spirituality pleasure comes from the you know outer world where the people uh, are only concerned with the outer world this is essential five senses and instinct based happiness physiological like food sex places music fragrance etc when we do fmri of this patient those respective cortex like in if i am seeing something and becoming happy my visual cortex is getting increased metabolism so it becomes active similarly auditory area and the pathways are dopamine and serotonin but i'm sure you have learned in dietary in the first and second and bbs regarding the circuits of uh, so second level is joy when you be, begin to feel happy for no particular reason where the happiness comes from inner world and outer world it is more psychological there are desires but the desires are not only eating or drinking or going or meeting places no here we are service to mankind success creativity achievement excellence in medical practice social interaction recognition etc so award recognition success money and excellence this comes into joy these are the ways how we can have joy and when we do fmri the different set of areas in the brain are active and this is what in the parietal periceum area and the chemicals of joy apart from dopamine and serotonin are oxytocin vasopressin and prolactin the third level is nijanan which is highest state here the mind and all activities cease or they are under our own control our consciousness becomes identified with the universal consciousness and if we do fmri during this meditation or similar activities there is a pinpoint area in the higher left parietal posterior lobule where you get increased activity and the chemicals here are different there are no more dopamine serotonin oxytocin or vasopressin they are endorphin and gaba etc etc we can actually quantify happiness with the help of uh, meg magnetoencephalogram fmri spec so it is single photon emission computerized tomography or pet my point here i want to give the tips how you can become happy physicians heal thyself as i mentioned you have to choose not only this road of success you have to also start walking on this road simon is the balanced life why we are not happy because we have i mentioned about those seven horses and then we have children issues social problems family issue competition negative emotions like ego jealousy everybody wants money and fame overnight time management and traffic mobile social media staff management misunderstanding legal issue paperwork they are demanding patients caregiver stress government issue it gst demonetization and the for front wars and other issues so there are lots of reasons why the doctor we are unhappy and we have to manage our physical and mental health and at the top of it these social media kills have a lot of time 2 hours 3 hours 4 hours just we chat 
uselessly without any productive thing. So we have to cut down on that. So what determines our happiness? Before we derive the keys, let us find out what determines our happiness. Genetics, 20%. Circumstances, 10%. Money, 20%. Attitude, 50%. So our attitude, behavior and morality decides our happiness by 50%. Circumstances, only 10%. And money and health, 20%. Some people are born happy because of genetical things. These are the genes of happiness that we have discovered. And you can actually do epigenetic uh, modification of your genes with the help of mindfulness, meditation, or your good positive actions, positive thoughts, emotions, behavior. You can actually change the expression of genes. And that is called genetic uh, hypothesis where you can unlock the DNA code or gene expression, and that is epigenetics. So uh, money, money is important, I don't deny. Money can bring success, but you know, this graph shows that this is increasing money per capita income, but it does not, this is, sorry, this is the real income per head, which, which when increases, doesn't reflect in increase in happiness. Beyond a certain level, money graph shows that there is a decrease in the happiness, why so? Money can bring security as well as comfort and place. It can bring improved standard of living and education, but more money corrupts and success corrupts. They may take away morality, relationships, health, bliss, and peace. So you should have optimum money for education, uh, your uh, standard of living, and good comfort. But excess of money will take away your health. You will die early. Take it from me. So be very careful. You know, what is important in your life? Somebody's awards or somebody's money, how does it matter to you? you your applause and your clapping dies, the trophies gather, rust, and winners are soon forgotten. How many of you will remember who are the Nobel Prize winner of last year? Nobody. But you remember the ones, your friends who have taken care of you, have helped in. So for us, what is important? how you take care of others and how others take care of you. So happiness is a state of mind. It's not something that happens that money or power can come out. So how to enjoy journey of life, keys to happiness. We'll see in quickly last 10 to 10 minutes, physical, social, moral, mental, religious, spiritual. What you should do, you should divide your day. Theoretically, if you feel that you have 24 hours of day, which we have, Eight hours for your work, you allow. Seven hours for your sleep. And rest nine hours, you can divide into three parts. Three hours, H, three H, one hour for health. So do gym, do exercise, walking, swimming, whatever suits you. One hour for a day-to-day -day activity, hygiene, etc. Daily activity. Then one hour is for your hobby or whatever your passion you should fulfill. Three hours for your F. One hour for family, friends, and faith. Whatever faith or religion, if you wish, you want to believe, then you can impart to that. Or you can transfer to here or there. Three hours for your S. Three for one hour for service to nation, humanity, mankind, or people. One hour for your spirituality. And one hour for laughing, smiling, reading, writing, whatever you want to do. So let's see quickly uh, health level. H. Eat right, do exercise, get enough sleep, your excretory function should be good, learn to relax, laugh exhaustingly and love abundantly. Enough sleep, walking, yoga, massage. Massage is your our Indian massage, not the Thai massage. Right? Laugh frequently and smile. Smile is the only way to tell if someone is happy, but this should be real smile. Smile solves many problems. And laugh frequently at yourself, not others, okay? And if you don't remember, don't say anything. Silence avoids so many problems with all due regards to this gentleman. Love abundantly. Friends, we have very limited time to live. If you spend your life in judging people, then when will you love them? So love them abundantly. If some of us are sick or if you see somebody suffering from anxiety, depression or psychosis, take them to psychiatrists, do counseling, get the drugs. You know what, if you are happy, you automatically become successful. But if you are successful, it is not necessary that you will become happy. Also, if you are happy, your psychosomatic disease will be reduced from arthritis, allergies, asthma, hypertension, coronary, 
to irritable bowel, acidity, constipation, tension, headache, migraine, premenstrual pain, discomfort, menopause, pain of the back, heave, depression, anxiety, substance abuse, knee disorder, skin disorder, fatigue, chronic syndrome, obesity, sleep problems, is all are psychosomatic more or less and happiness improves them. So do five pleasant activities like music, dance, art, creativity, traveling. In that age, one hour was for hobbies. So this is for your hobbies, reading, gardening, grooming. Music is the medicine of mind. I tell you, I uh, have learned music, uh, classical and then guitar, uh, Hawaii guitar and music has helped me in relieving my stress for last 25, 30 years. Is also meditation. And ever since I've learned meditation, it has helped me relieve my stress and it has made me composed and calm. Also, I do a lot of reading and writing that also expresses myself and that is also very helpful. So I'm just giving you a tip. Take up some kind of this thing. Read. A library is a hospital for the mind. So read. And I mentioned about time management. Improve this moment. Learn to remain in this moment. A good coping tool is to remember to improve this moment. Don't stay in future or past. Come out of that and enjoy this particular moment. Okay, then come to five important relationships, married life, children, in-laws and parents, friends and profession. These relations are very important which you have to balance. Married life, many of them are not married but will be on the path to select your partner and we're happy that I'm seeing that the trend is that uh, students are getting hooked uh, in the last year of MBBS and that's a good way because then you get to know each other. And uh, marriage is a way through which two people join together to solve the problems they never had before. So this is a very interesting uh, metaphor of marriage. Uh, you never had problems, but even since you got married, you started creating problems and then solving. So happy married life is a kind of oxymoron. Those two things may not go together. But people like me who are lucky have good spouses and then... Uh, uh, you are happy and your life becomes very heaven. Women want to be understood, loved, cared for, validated, accepted, and they want freedom. Google will not answer the question. I am answering your question. What do women want? And in turn, men wants what? Leave me alone. Men do not want anything. Just leave me alone. And have friends. Friends, a person doesn't need so many friends. One, two good friends are enough. Then five virtues. Quickly we'll see gratitude, appreciation, forgiveness, compassion, excellence. These five virtues you have to really develop very carefully. You need an effort sometimes. Gratitude is what? Just appreciate people, those who have done favor to you, big or small, little or small, you just feel like I want to thank heartily Vedanshi and the whole team for giving me this opportunity to interact with you all guys. I'm thankful to all of you to be here. I want to thank Dean. I want to thank the whole management for giving me this platform and my colleagues who are all giving talks today. So this is my thanks from my within. I, I mean it. Be grateful and appreciate and great appreciation and gratefulness. Gratefulness uh, and appreciation is the smallest virtue of every person. You must appreciate. You may appreciate somebody's smile. You may appreciate somebody's shirt, even if not anything else. Somebody's handwriting, somebody's way of talking, somebody's politeness. Appreciate from the heart and start doing it abundantly from today and see what happens. A lot of grace will come from above. Then five mental processes you will be careful. You don't should you should not be attached very much to anybody. Not even a person. Not to institutes. Not to because attachment is a very you know notorious thing. You you, you should love them but without expectation. And you will watch your thoughts. Guard your thoughts. Guard your desires and ambitions. You know every thought you have is depicted now in this pack machine. In 1995, I learned that if I have a, uh, anger, if I have a jealousy, or if I have a compassion, if I have a uh, kind of uh, uh, positive emotion, 
whatever emotion or thought you can pick up in your brain with the spect machine the particular area would get increased cerebral blood flow and you can find it. so it is atomic every thought is now atomic so be careful and each thought imparts uh, uh, you know lot of weight to your body every cell of the body is affected with your every thought and emotion like if you are angry what happens your pulse rises your blood pressure rises your your oh, Your, your pupils get dilated. Sympathetic response comes, and all those things. So this is how I mean, simple uh, sympathetic response people get constricted, and you are on a flight or fight run mode. So this is how each thought and emotion affects ambitions. Now, where ambitions is one of the major reasons of your failure. You require desires, you require ambitions, but not out of proportion. It should be in touch with reality. Amount of balance in the bank at the time of your death. is the extra work that you have done which you should not have done so don't do extra work stop comparing yourself with others his or her life span life chart is different yours is different why you want to compare you are based in your own do compare with your own self stop expecting from people stop criticizing start sharing start helping start loving give for give and count blessings enjoy moment every day and follow the ethics and with that uh, this is the last part of the talk in five minutes i'll finish uh, spiritual practice friends uh, i have mentioned about three as service soul and here spirituality is not something that you know a belief a belief for a religion or hindu mohammedan or sikh or isai spirituality is sitting with your own self if you are alone sitting with your own self that is spirituality look into what is going through your heart or mind what are your thoughts try to decipher them try to change if they are negative that is spirituality sitting with your own self in simple world is spirituality and the moment you start seeing yourself and talking with yourself you will realize why you are unhappy because of your own thoughts your wrong emotions your desire your ego your attachment your attitude these are the reasons of our unhappiness and spirituality friends is able to remove all those uh, negative things so do some spiritual reading do satsang chanting prayer meditation and whatever uh, books you like little bhagavad gita or whatever book you like you just read that and at least spend some time with like minded people if you nothing i don't want you to go to delhi temple or this or that no that is a religion i am talking about spirituality pray for people pray for well being of all men, human kind and even animal kingdom pray that this corona goes away pray that economy sets back into the uh, original tune and pray that everybody remains healthy happy everybody lives long that is this prayer and uh, meditation is also very important thing and uh, unfortunately i am not uh, talking on meditation today because uh, it's all together different topic of one hour but the neurochemistry and neurophysiology of meditation is just you should understand guys this is the reverse of stress stress is sympathetic overload meditation is parasympathetic overload so meditation mode is yogic mode slow pulse slow bp slow respiration calmness kindness and you can learn meditation from your kind guru or guide or from online platform focus on breathing like anapan sati or focus on object like patanjali radio focus on a sound focus on a thought focus on a sensual object focus on sensory perception like vipassana imagery soul meditation what i want to draw attention to one of the important landmark research on meditation i was uh, doing research on fasting on human subject and i in that context i had to go to waste some times and uh, i had a fortune of meeting some people in nasa and then later to professor andy newberg who was doing some research on uh, meditation now this fellow first time in 2002 brought out a seminal paper spect images of meditation and that is a spect is single photon emission computerized tomography which shows that it's the blood flow of the brain and he demonstrated that before the meditation the baseline this is the status of blood flow in the prefrontal area of human brain 
but during meditation after 30 to 45 minutes deep meditation you can see there is increase in the red mark the red mark is the blood flow roughly 30 percent increase blood flow in prefrontal area what does it mean it means your what resides in prefrontal area you must have read in your anatomy books and physiology etc here resides your intelligence, judgment, prioritization, executive function, planning, what you plan like conference is your executive function. Your uh, uh, higher senses, everything, why human race is important and ruling other uh, species, why is ruling the planet? Because of our prefrontal law, which the other animals don't have and here, all these gets increase uh, circulation so you become more powerful intelligent so-called pragnavan and your intellection and intuition both improve the second important terminal benefit manifestation you found was in the posterior parietal lobe on the left side this is a parietal area here there is sudden drop of blood flow during deep meditation what does it mean this is the area of orientation to time, place, and person. And here, during depth of meditation, you are no more manifesting. Therefore, your ego, your attitude, your thoughts, your emotions, your uh, desires, all this subside with meditation. And during long-term uh, practice of meditation, you become a better person. You can control the processes of your mind, which we discuss, same attachment, ego, uh, your attachment, your art, the wish, your desires and thoughts. So you become master of your mind. You can control your mind. Or so to say, man me se aman hone ki prakriya. So that is what uh, meditation is. So this is the uh, fMRI of the meditation scan. So friends, here I want to end my talk. This is the formula of happiness for you. Which took 60 years of my life to arrive at, which I am giving you in just uh, one hour. Stop comparing, stop expecting, stop criticizing. You can take a photograph, start sharing, start helping, and start loving people. Don't criticize, just love them. We have a very short lifespan, we don't have time to love. How do we criticize? No time. Give. Whatever you can give to people, your time, money, or whatever. Forgive people for whatever small weakness. Don't keep in grudge in mind. It occupies space in your brain and takes rent. Don't do that. Forgive and forget. Count blessings. Enjoy every moment. Learn music, dance, art, creativity. Read great, read great books. Do sports. Do gardening. Take all the chance to appreciate people. Thank them heartfully. Learn creativity. Be with nature whenever you have time. Go to sunset or sunrise or spend time at the river bank. Enjoy traveling after Corona, of course. Accept your own limitation. Don't compare. Do yoga. Do exercise. Control your mental processes, as I said. Attachment, control, ego, anger, greed, and jealousy. And do prayers. Whatever, five, ten minutes. You can do, do chanting and do meditation. Whatever you can do, not always possible, I understand. But whatever little you will do from this roadmap, I am sure it will add to your add to your happiness. So on the left brain, you have success and excellence. In the right brain, right hemisphere, connecting hemisphere, your happiness. In fact, happiness lies all over both hemispheres. And I have given you keys of success and excellence on one side and I also given you keys and roadmap of happiness on the other side. My dear lovely friends, I want to tell you again that I love my students. I want you to be happy and successful both. So take a, whatever you can take from this, you do that and start appreciating people and nature and start loving people and also thank God and thank everybody around you and try to control your mental processes. Do meditation and prayer. I think I have gone a very long way and uh, this was the chart that I have given and this is the address of happiness. Happiness lies inside. Happiness is not outside. 
don't rush in the external world for happiness the true happiness is inside and don't think that your happiness depends on persons or people or your unhappiness is due to one person or some circumstances it is you who are the creator of your happiness and success okay so do that and you are decide every morning that you are in a good mood happiness is a choice thank you very much thank you very much i hope you enjoyed uh, thank you so much dr sudhir sir uh, if anyone has any questions please feel free to write it in the chat box um let me help under my question um so there is a question uh, while we are on the topic of success uh the topic of failure is bound to come in our heads so during our journey to achieve our dreams failure is something everyone fears of so how to not let that get in our head and not affect our hard work and determination well i think uh, fail without failure nobody meets success so uh, you have to understand that if you are meeting a failure that means you are proceeding further on the path of success and look at the lives of people like us like we also met failure in life and if you consider we a little successful people uh, if not fully then we had also face uh, failures in life failures at so many fronts but like my success should not go to my head my failure also should not go to my head the uh, every time i lose or fail i try to analyze where i went wrong why the things went wrong and i just work upon that if i want to achieve that thing again then i do another attempt and come out with brighter things so this is very simple mindset you don't take things to you know i have seen many people you know equating themselves with success and failure no you are not representing success or failure success and failure is a circumstance and circumstances do pass away they are time bound so neither success nor failure should go to your head not to your heart i, I tell you uh, failures sometimes teach such a big lesson and they bring down you to the ground also which is also necessary if all the time you are flying then you will become arrogant and uh, nasty man so basically failure comes to teach you a great lesson and every time you fail you should understand that your path further is more clear and now you can see with clarity so you should not be disturbed at all okay Yes, thank you, sir. So, next question is: uh, success and happiness. There is uh, the balance is very important in life. So, do you think believing in certain religions or spiritual having spirituality help, helps in striking that balance? Having faith in God. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, as far as I am concerned, I do believe in God. I do believe in human beings, and I do believe in all living beings. So. Uh, i really uh, whenever i want to uh, lay my head somewhere many times my attempts have not succeeded or i have failed or many times when i have succeeded where do i go and put my head that is that particular factor we call god you may not believe in god or religion you may be atheist but then also there is some element where you want to put your head and you may coin whatever name it is that is very important faith and belief system is the system that is very operational in human uh, or in i all of you want i want you to read the biology of belief the book by bruce willis you must read all that i don't have time to explain how the faith not the faith in a religion or god faith itself is very important word how each of the cell has a you know seven microvolt current and total 70 billion cells how do they create energy and this energy how does it help so i think uh, uh, that is the science of uh, faith but let us come back to the ground level you know faith in a religion and faith in god is one aspect but what are the religions for do you know what is religion 
religion is nothing but the laws of nature to preserve nature and preserve biology what does the religion teach all religions teach the same thing uh, truth non violence non stealing don't collect more than what is required that is aparigra and be faithful to your spouse these five things satya ahimsa brahmacharya aparigra aste now if you imagine a society where everybody is allowed to do everything everybody can say untruth and do stealing and do you know become debaucherous and all what will be the system the whole nature and the whole biology will fail so in accordance with the survival compatibility and coexistence the laws of religion are made and whenever we have violated these laws like we did recently corona has come up so nature teaches great lessons whenever we violate when we disturb so many species then these kind of things why even corona there will be corona then be corona there will be earthquakes there will be tsunami so religion is nothing but maintaining ecology and balance if you really understand the religion that is what it is and for that there is a name coined god whether you believe it or not there is something why which is why we are here what is the reason of existence we have to understand that even einstein people like einstein also at some point of time had to confess that yes beyond that there is god and nothing else okay so even if you reduce uh, science to a mere uh, uh, physiological and uh, uh, physics then also there there is a one point where you don't know beyond black hole that is one thing now coming to spirituality in spirituality uh, you don't require uh, the belief system of god because spirituality is beyond uh, religion what is spirituality as i mentioned if you are going from state of fear to ionosphere you require a rocket to propel you then from ionosphere to go outside troposphere you require one another rocket to propel you and when you are out of troposphere you are in the space so space is what we call is uh, uh, spirituality but before that the religious system comes yoga comes and then you the like these two rockets bring you to the space by yoga i mean karma yoga gnan yoga bhakti yoga and raj yoga so these are the engines beyond religion these engines are required and then you come to the spirituality spirituality is meditation uh, kind of self uh, discipline some kind of uh, penance or some kind of what we call as a tap and uh, high spiritual reading these are the spiritual things and that uh, really brings you to the realm of uh, inner domain where uh, where the consciousness some people call it soul scientists mm-hmm. neuroscience calls it consciousness so that is where uh, the spirituality stays but no one can directly go to space so one has to pass through certain stages so religion has four steps dan tap shil and bhav dan is donate charity do whatever annadan vastadan gnan dan or paisa dan whatever tap is your some kind of austerity or penance shil is your character ahimsa satya ahim satya